In this video, I'm going to show you how you can apply Fourier transform to images with ImageJ and how to apply inverse Fourier transform. So we start with this uh, same images, the same image we, we've used uh, in this whole session about uh, nuclei. And uh, with ImageJ, it's, it's uh, very easy to apply Fourier transform. You just go to process FFT, it stands for fast Fourier transform, and then FFT. And here is the frequential uh, representation of your image. So here you have your image in the spatial uh, domain, here it's in the frequential domain. The great thing with Fourier transform is that you can apply uh, inverse Fourier transform. So you go to process FFT and then inverse FFT and you get uh, the inverse of the frequential uh, decomposition, so it's the exact same image in that case. All right. So now we're gonna play a little bit with this frequential um, representation because here we can select uh, some frequencies and we, we can then apply an inverse Fourier transform and see what we get. So when you think about an image and um, its uh, frequential um, decomposition, you're going to have high frequencies and low frequencies. Then you need to think about um, intensity fluctuations. If you have um, areas with intensities that are very uniform, that do not fluctuate, you actually are in an area with low frequencies. So basically, if you have um, a region that is very flat in terms of intensity, it's going to correspond to low so to low frequencies. In regions where your intensity is uh, changing a lot, then this is going to correspond to high frequencies. So basically, if you think about noise, it's going to be a region with very high frequencies because the intensity is changing a lot, and that's going to correspond to of the high frequencies of, of your uh, spatial decomposition. So let's um, go back to this, the FFT of your image, and we're going to select the low frequencies. So in this representation, low frequencies are in the center, and the further away you go to the border of the image, and um, the, the higher frequencies you are uh, considering. So let's select in um, a novel region of interest, and we're going to uh, select a region in the center. So basically, this corresponds to the low frequency, the low frequencies of your image. If we want to see what this corresponds to, then we can just get rid of everything else. So you go to um, edit and you then do clear outside. All right. Now we only have the low frequencies and we can actually um, do an inverse FFT on that. So we go to FFT, inverse FFT, and this is what you get. So as you can see, that's different from the original image. And what we have is really uh, regions uh, where the intensity is is uh, flat, we, it's actually it corresponds to the to the low frequencies of this image. So to the the so the part of your image that is not changing a lot. Okay. Now we can uh, we can actually we can look at the high frequencies. So let's compute again the Fourier transform of this image. And now instead of um, considering what is in the center of this image, we're going to consider what is not at the periphery, but outside the center. So here, instead of uh, clearing outside, we're going to clear inside. We go to Edit, Clear. And we're going to do the inverse FFT of this image. So process FFT, inverse FFT. And this is what you get. So it's very different now. 
at the high fluctuations of intensities. So you see it corresponds to um, regions inside the nuclei where the intensity is uh, changing. Like when you s have this kind of dots inside the nuclei, you can see that it's, uh, it's reproduced in the high frequencies as well as the contours because contours are um, regions where the intensity is changing from background to nuclei. So it's, it's changing quite a lot. And you see that you also um, can uh, see the contours. Now there's one last thing that we can do is to do a band pass filter. So we're gonna uh, remove the high frequencies and the low frequencies. So let's compute again the FFT of the image. And we're gonna start by removing the low frequencies. I'm gonna try to do something like this. Let's go to edit and clear. And now we're gonna define the high frequencies like this, we're gonna clear outside. Okay, so we just have this frequency, so it's not it's not very symmetric, but it's okay. Uh, just to have an idea about what it gives. So if we do an inverse FFT, this is what you get. So you when you do that, you get rid of the of um, high frequencies, so we don't have noise. We don't the the region in the nuclei are flatter than in the original image. Uh, we also lose sometimes some of the contours. You, you can you can definitely see that when you have uh, nuclei that are touching like this three nuclei here here. Now you see it's 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 much fainter. Um, if you want to do something that is um, probably uh, cleaner, you can use uh, the bandpass filter that is in image J. So if you go to process FFT, you actually have a bandpass filter. And it's interesting because um, with this filter, they actually give a, a correspondence between um, the frequencies and the size. And if you think about it, um, if you have regions that have uh, that are very flat in terms of intensity, so low frequency, if it's very very uniform, it probably corresponds to a large object. If you have very high frequencies, for example, noise, then uh, it's it's going to correspond to very very small objects. So you can uh, give some correspondence between your filters and and the size. And we're gonna display the filter because you're gonna see so what it looks like. So let's filter this image. And so this is the result of your image. So you see it? It's similar to what I had before, but it's it's a bit better. And when you look at the filter, you can understand why it's a bit better. So let's just adjust the intensity here. So you see it, it actually uh, makes quite some sense in this image, so it doesn't segment the nuclei, but it's um, an interesting filtering that may help to actually segment the, the nuclei. Uh, you clearly um, better, uh, better, better see the nuclei uh, in comparison with the background, and even the ones that have low intensity in this case, uh, are all see very um, easy to to see. And if we look at the at the filter they used, it's this filter. So you see, you have a hole inside uh, in the middle, and outside it's also very low. But it's it gives you a better result because instead of a hard threshold that we did here, it's it's a, it's a soft threshold. So you have. Uh, higher weights for the ones that are um, in these frequencies, but you don't have a um, hard threshold that we did here. Like we have, it's, it's zero or one for these frequencies. 
And that's why it, it gives you a better result.